Hi, this is Kendra, USA Teens Today. We're back for SAT test preparation. You may also use this for PSAT test preparation. We welcome you back. And for those of you who gave us good reviews on the last video, oh, thank you so much. By the way, if you like what you see, please go ahead and like us on YouTube. Thank you. And remember that your study style is going to be different from someone else's. This is going to go over PEMDAS a little, but not too much. Uh, most of you guys already know that. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. These are things you should know. We're going over more how to work with word problems. Know your study style. We went over that before. Try to determine what the question is asking before you attempt to work through the question. As obvious as that sounds, some people don't. They just go right into trying to do the problem, and that usually causes errors. And also, it's a waste of time. Just try to read through the problem. And if you don't have enough time to read it seriously, just look for keywords. You must understand what the question is asking. The question may force you to use everything that math includes. When I say everything, I'm being a little bit braggadocio, a little bit too far, but in general, most problems on the SAT are going to have you use algebra, geometry, logic, and some of the algebra isn't just algebra one, it's also algebra two. Practice question number one. Let's go right to it. There are B buckets of water needed to fill a fish tank. After G gallons of water have been pumped in terms of B and G, what percentage of water has been filled? Here the question is right at you. What percentage of water has been filled? And please do not look for what's actually supposed to go in the total tank, look at what percentage of water has been filled because you don't have to fill the whole tank. So you have 100 G over B percent for question A. B is B over 100 G percent. C is 100 G over B percent. And D is 100 with your brackets, percent times B minus G over B percent. Okay, so just think about that because as you see these practice questions like this, these are on the SAT, they're on the PSAT, and all they do is take the words around, use different scenarios. One might be instead of, you know, B buckets of water, it might be B buckets of gasoline needed to fill a, a, a real tank, a, a car tank. And so just get used to what it's asking. And already you know it has to be a fraction. Now, we went over this. What percentage of water has been filled? So all you have to worry about. You have to make it an equation. You can use the variables B and G to place numbers into an imaginary equation. And for those of you who took Algebra 2, I don't mean, you know, using imaginary or composite numbers. I just mean make up your own equation. If you don't like the one I gave you, try to work through one, but this is an example. Since B represents the total number of buckets, let G represent the amount of water that has been filled. 100B minus x times g equals the total water volume. And in this situation, x is going to be an unknown variable. The equation is on the side so you can look through it. And remember I mentioned PEMDAS, so please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You really have 100b minus g times x. You don't have to treat it as if it's going to be a function. You're just looking at parts. Why am I using 100? Because most things are done in 
If, you, if someone asks you how much money you have, you know, what was given, how much money you have left after you had, you know, a certain amount of money, that would be your percentage overall taken away. So we assume all the time that it's 100 as the base number of what would have started or what could be the total to go ahead and fill up the total water volume and then minus because you know that the tank is not completely full. If you have any questions, guys, remember, and I'll have this at the end of the slide, you can always email us at jacobitslearning at gmail.com and we'll get back to you with any other questions you may have. Step two, the fraction should have a denominator. You can make it one, you can make it whatever, but here I'm kind of skipping ahead. So if you're on the SAT running out of time or you want to do a problem like this to get to the larger problems, we're going to go ahead and cross multiply so we can get rid of B. Because as you guys know from algebra, you have to get rid of some of the other variables to solve the problem. So you, you get rid of the common denominator and then you have 100. Okay, your X is there, that's what you're solving. And then you would have X times G over B. But guess what? It asks you in terms of B and G. So X would be the actual number, but it says in terms of that, so that it can confuse you, cause you to go crazy, you only have so many choices, so you already have the part of it and you don't have to worry about X. Next practice question. On Wednesday, a jeweler made four more bracelets than she made during the previous day. If she made 16% more bracelets on Wednesday than she did on Tuesday, how many bracelets did she make on Wednesday? Let's just look at this question. On Wednesday, a jeweler made four more bracelets. Four more means four plus. So it's four plus than what she already had, except for the question is also telling you if she made 16% more bracelets on Wednesday than she did on Tuesday. That is a big, huge chunk of advice to help you solve this problem. All you really have to do now is determine where the 16% goes in relation to what is happening with four more and this and that and this problem may look more complicated than it actually is. So let's go on up. Step one, if you choose a random answer, you might choose answer C because the number 25, like that number might stick out. One over 100 is, is a percent of a whole 1%, but 25 over 100 would be 1 fourth. But if you do that, you're considering and forgetting that 1 fourth is 25% and not 16%. However, if you're thinking another way, 25 is 1 fourth of a total of a, of a whole, but 4 more than 25 is 29. 29 is the answer to D. So you can find out how you got 16% more that was made. So if you chose a random answer, said, I'm just going to try 20 or 25, and you did 25 times 16, you get 4. So answer C is not your answer, but it helps you if you took any of these numbers and started multiplying them by 16%. So let's try something else. You can multiply each number by 16%. This is time consuming though. So you can figure out that 16 is closer to 20% and 20% is really 10% plus 10%. So you can figure this question out in your mind and right here I'm just giving you a visual. Okay, 20% is what this question is giving you. You'd have two plus two is four. 
20 plus 4 is 24. But really, you'd be a little bit under that. You'd be more like at 23 or 22. Do you have any of those as answers, 22 or 23? No, you don't. So guess what else? Uh, 21, answer B, is probably scratched off. How about 20? 10% 10 of 20 is 2. 20% 20 of, of, of 20 is 2, and that's 4. But guess what? 16% of 20 gives you what? If you think about it, it has to be closer to 3 or 3.5. So if you actually did 20 times 16%, you'd get like 3.2. So you round that down, you'd get 3. 23 is not one of your choices. So let's move on. I'm showing you. But if you could just think through it mentally and you were trying to take a guess because you were running out of time, that's how you would use this. Okay, so... Here's what's going on here. Answer is D. You can play backward and forward with this, and you get 29 minus 4 is 25. That's the answer. This question is from an SAT practice test. Okay, so it's authentic. <laughs> the answer is correct. But let's go some math see if we can do part of 16 think backwards 16 percent is the answer or it was 16 percent I'm sorry was given to you 29 D is the answer you can look at these other equations 21 gives you 2 if you do 21 times 16 percent exactly you'll get 3.3 .3. okay 21 plus 3 would give you 24 you might be tempted to think that that's 25. That's why I said think of it in terms of 20 and try to get as close because then you're not going to get an answer. You know, 21 plus 3 gives you 24. That's not an answer. If you did it to 20, you'd still get 24. That's not a choice. So you can't use B. 25 now you can figure out you get 5 25 plus 5 is 30 close enough but we already went through what it is that's the closest answer but you have to remember answer D is correct answer C is not 25 times 16 percent is 4 25 plus 4 is 29 that's what it's asking you. You're almost done. Go back and check. You, if you did answer D, 29 times 16, you're not going to get four more, so you don't have to worry about that. We've already solved the answer. Okay. Practice question three. Of all the houses in a certain neighborhood, 80% of the houses have pools. So your mind's got to be thinking, you can go ahead and skip and jump to conclusions and think that 20% don't. But we don't really have to do that. We have to look at the evidence that's here and think about containing this information. Of those houses with pools, 60% have pools with heat. And I put heated pools here. If there are 56 houses with pools that do not have heat, how many houses are in the neighborhood? Again, this question is taken from a real SAT. The only thing is we have pools substituted for, I think it was garages. So we have pools substituted with garages. Okay, the numbers, guys, are actually real. So. You can get scared, let this information intimidate you, but try not to, okay? Of the houses with pools, 60% have pools with heat, which means that 40% are without. So don't look at the numbers yet or your choices yet, because that will only confuse you, okay? So 
Step one was determined what the question is asking. The question is asking how many houses are in the neighborhood total. So they kind of lead you to this pool question, and then they want to say, okay, well, how many houses? Because you already know it's 20% <laughs> of the houses that don't have pools, but they want to know total number of houses just based on this limited amount of information. So make sure you're not going for houses with pools or houses with heated pools because they are trying to distract you. And when they take that number 56 and throw that in and say, if there are 56 houses with pools that do not have heat, they're trying to throw you. So just try to keep everything contained here. Okay. We need to use the information that's given. It's part of the next step. You were given the percentage of 60 that have pools with heat. Okay. Uh, this means 40% of the houses do not have heat. You were also given 80% have pools. They are asking you total houses with 56 that do not have heat. Your mind is supposed to think about the 60-40. So let's get into this. Let's go. Forty percent of the houses have pools without heat. The neighborhood has eighty percent which have houses. Forty times eighty is thirty-two. Okay? You were given sixty, but you have to know that sixty plus forty is a hundred. These are parts to a whole. Forty times eighty is thirty-two. 32 is the number of houses that do not have pools. That's the percentage of the number of houses that do not have pools. We already know that the number is 56. So your mind's got to think this 32% and this 56 have to work together. Next slide. Set an equation. 56 heated pools times 32 equal the equation. 32% times a variable equals 56. So I used Y. You can use A. You can use whatever variable you want. Let's just go ahead and solve the problem. So when we get ready to solve the equation, 32Y, we have to divide to get to the other side. You might be tempted to multiply. But why are you multiplying when you already know 56 and 32 are equal? So you have to divide. When we divide, we cancel out the 32, we get y equals, and when you divide this, you are going to get an answer. And your answer is 175. You can check that on your calculator. I don't know if they're going to allow you to use it for this portion or not. Sometimes they mix these questions in with the ones that you're allowed to use uh, with your calculator and sometimes not. If you have any questions, email us at either jacobitslearning at gmail.com or at usateenstoday at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. And please leave comments so we know how we can either improve it or actually if you enjoyed it or if it was anything that helped you to, you know, think about shortcuts for the actual exam. Thanks.